Hey everyone, welcome to the Fortress of Solitude podcast. I am your host, Sergio Pereira, and today I am joined by Matthew Anthony. And I'm sure a couple of you people might know who exactly he is. He's the guy behind the popular, popular channel that you've seen on YouTube, Strider HD. And he's pretty much the guy doing all this deep fake technology and he's put together some cool concept trailers and he's a fantastic video editor and video producer. Matt, how are you doing, man? Ah, oh, pretty good. How's it going over there? <laughs> yeah, it's it's good. You know, it's 2021. We still have a virus going around, so yeah. you know, we can't even can't even talk about it anymore. So we're gonna be discussing instead some rather cool stuff, and especially yeah. like I've seen the stuff you've been doing, and I mean, we were chatting off air about the the Lex mm-hmm. Luthor thing you're doing with Brian Cranston, and it's it's really fascinating to see some of the stuff that you've done with deepfake technology. I mean, I remember when there was a whole Mandalorian thing with Luke Skywalker, and you actually managed to you know, I think do a better job than even what the guys did, like, you know, for the Mandalorian. So I actually wanted to ask you, how difficult is it to actually implement deep fake technology? Um, I guess, uh, basically, first of all, I want to say thanks for having me on the podcast today. And uh, I'm sorry, there was a little bit of scheduling stuff going on earlier, last, like last week. And I'm happy to finally uh, be able to get on. So I appreciate have, you, know, you having me on. Um, so, all right. Yeah. So thanks for that. Cool. Awesome. And then, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but let me get into like the deep fake stuff. Uh, Cause I mean, I can go back for, I can go into it in depth if you want. Like it started, uh, the, the difficulty of it, I mean, it's, it's like anything. It's like you, you kind of learn the steps, uh, to do it and you just get better and better over time. Like for me, it took me a couple of months to really, um, get good at it. I started with, uh, this one app called face swap which is kind of like a dumbed down version of it, which I didn't really even know at first. I was like, oh, let me try this. And then I tried it. I did like a Chris Evans one where he played Homelander from the boys. And it was like, okay, well, this isn't, (laughs) this didn't turn out that great compared to some of the other people that were doing it. So I was like, all right, so let me really see what I'm doing wrong. And then I did a lot of like, I did some more research and I found uh, that most of the big people, uh, Shamook, Shamook and uh, Easy Rider and, uh, you know, all these guys who were doing like these incredible deep fakes were using this thing called Deep Face Lab. And, um, you know, I actually, I had one of the people who, uh, the do- guy actually who did the Robert Downey Jr. and uh, Tom Holland, Back to the Future, he was actually helping me on a bunch of videos. And he showed me kind of where to go for the tutorials and what he kind of uses. And and um, I kind of started reading and doing a lot of stuff after he, he showed me, like, kind of the, the basics, you know? Yeah. And um, I went into, from there, I kind of went into all the tutorials. And it took me a good couple of months to to really get, uh, get good at it. So yeah. it's... It's yeah. kind of interesting though to see like obviously it's it's quite predominant nowadays you know you see a lot of people playing around deep fake technology but one of the mm-hmm. things that I've realized especially like looking at some of your videos and especially some of the ones out there as well I know there's a big drive in Hollywood now for de-aging you know there's that I mean we've seen yeah. it in the MCU I mean they've done it to quite a few characters we've seen it obviously in the Mandalorian is a big one but I, I sometimes see deep fake technology actually looks better than some of the de-aging thing. Like, what do you think is the reason for that? What, what do you think, like, is there a benefit there or is the technology just completely different? Um, well, I think it all depends on, like, for one, I mean, there's always things like budget and how much time you have to do certain things for a, you know, for a, for a show. Like with Mandalorian, with Luke, like, you know, it was, uh, I don't know how long that shot was, but, it, you know, maybe a quarter of the episode. And I'm not sure. I know they had another actor come in and play him and then they kind of just did the, the CG. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. I don't know if it was, like, t- I don't really know if it was deep fake or if, or if they just did it the, old, you know, the traditional way with the dots on the face. I'm pretty sure they did it that way. But yeah. um, the deep fake stuff, it, it takes time. Like it, it could take a lot of time to do. Um, and I'm not sure. I mean, I'm sure they had the copyright. Like it wasn't a copyright issue because it's Disney, you know? So they could have used a younger Hamill from A New Hope or, you know, um, you know, Return of the Jedi or Empire. I'm not sure, you know, there's, there's kind of a copyright thing going on, but like I said, I don't know why they would have an issue with that. And yeah, like the one that I did, it it was a lower resolution one that I wanted to use because I was trying to do it quickly <laughs> because I know people were going to be on it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like I knew some of these people who were really good at it were going to be on it. So I'm like, so I, I only got my, I only got like a 720p one out, but it still kind of looked pretty good. Yeah, that, that's Consi- what I was going to say. It, it looked yeah. really, really cool. I actually thought it looked better than what was actually on the show. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I was uh, happy, happily surprised with uh, the reaction to that. And, um, you know, I, I do talk to some of the other people who do the deep fakes and, uh, you know, I, it's 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 getting to be more of a crowded, it's not a crowded space, but like people are definitely there's a lot more attention to deep fake and deep fake stuff like as of like the last year or so, I would say. And um, like to me, I was kind of looking to, to, to spread myself away from people who were just doing like concept videos yeah. and trailers because I've been doing them for a long time. I want to say like all the way, but probably back to 2013, 2014. Um, so yeah, for me, it's, it's really given me like a lot of new ideas and a lot of, it's it's because it's hard using like I used to use After Effects and um, other tools with Mocha to do like VFX and for videos, and now I can kind of rely more on this and you know honing my skills in this is giving me a lot of new opportunities for videos and uh, you know I'm happy I'm happy with the reaction so far. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> and obviously, like the one thing like I, I've been saying to you, you know, like your videos are fantastic. I mean, I've been following for quite a while. I mean, I know that Fortress of Solitude, right. we've been following you for quite a while. Which yeah, yeah. Some of your videos and absolutely. But the other thing is that obviously we've also been seeing a lot of uh, like other people coming out. All these people, independent, like you know, YouTube channels. And the scariest thing is that sometimes, I mean, I actually saw. It was a video a while back. I can't remember who it was actually. And like, I actually feel like really bad, you know, talking about it, not actually giving the person a shout out here. But it was about like they they actually took Henry Cavill's face from Justice League. You know, the whole you know the whole thing. With oh, the, the mustache. Friend. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. They actually made it look perfect. Like, and they and they did it in five minutes. They did this whole like five minute tutorial video of how they could have done it better than that. And this like leads me to ask, like, what is actually going wrong in the industry that? If somebody on YouTube can do this in five minutes and you literally got four hundred million dollars behind this movie's reshoots, how do they get that wrong? I see with the with the Cavill thing. I mean, it was the thing with that is it was such a blatant shot in the movie. You're so close to his face. You're gonna everyone's gonna realize. Yeah. You know something's wrong. Something something's not right. Or you know, and uh, like I don't know what the deal was. I mean, I don't know like like what the deal was with that, but. Um, Maybe I, I guess maybe they weren't like I said. There's also a copyright issue with with that, like in terms of like Mission Impossible and you know Warner Brothers. With I don't know, like you know if they were allowed to use certain things. I'm not sure about all, all of that. Yeah. But yeah, like if you really collect the right assets and do the right steps and, uh, through the deep face uh, deep face lab, and you can really come out with really good uh, results. And I'm I'm pretty sure you're talking about. I think that was Shamuk who did that or Shamuk. I don't know how to say his name correctly, but yeah. like he uh, he did yeah he did a really good job on that. Um, and I'm pretty sure some other people tried it too and did a pretty good job. So yeah, it's. It's kind of incredible what you can do if um, you have the right resources and, and the right amount of time and knowledge of uh, of the software. And like, yeah, I don't know what they were doing with that. Uh, it, <laughs> but, but it, it's also, it caused a ruckus online. It really did. Yeah, but, but it's also <laughs> like, I mean, what I'm thinking to myself is like, I, I mean, I know, especially like with visual effects artists and anybody that's involved in that sort of sphere, they are highly critical of themselves. They're highly critical of everything yeah. that they see. Because I mean, even you were telling me that, you know, your video for Luke was like, you know, in 720. And yeah. I would have not noticed that. And I mean, you notice that and you know exactly like, you know where to look, the spots are wrong. And I mean, obviously with the mm -hmm. Cable thing, the people that must have been involved, they must have probably been thinking, oh, why are you making us do this? It's going to be so predominant. So is this probably like mm -hmm. just an executive thing? Like, you know, eventually like, ah, fuck it, we're just going to put it in. You know, that's it. Like, we're not even going to bother to like argue this anymore. Yeah. It, it, it kind of it, it kind of makes me think he was kind of like shoehorned in there. Like, we, well, we can't have him in with a mustache because that would just be weird unless they went total long hair and like, you know, a different type of Superman maybe or something. I don't know. But like kind of like with Snyder Cut, they're kind of, well, what they've been doing, they show like the black suit and like, I don't know if they're going to totally change him or anything. I don't I don't think so. But yeah. like, um, yeah, I don't know what they were doing with that. I, I, I don't know if that was like a last minute thing. Oh, well, we got to change that. Like, I, I, I don't know. But to me, it kind of... It makes me think it was like a time, you know, a time uh, crunch type thing where they kind of needed to, to fix that. And uh, I, maybe they just didn't uh, know the best way of going about that. And they just did it the traditional way. And I mean, I don't know how they had people there looking at it and, and like giving it the green light. I don't know how they yeah, did that. Exactly. <laughs> you know? I mean, that, that for me, I think is still like, you know, the weirdest thing. And I mean, this brings me to the next topic as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think there is a bit of over-reliance on CGI nowadays in films. I mean, we're looking at it nowadays and 
you know, almost every movie that's out there, there's quite a lot of it. And I think it's, it's taking away a little bit from practical effects, you know, from yeah. you know, having this sort of thing. And I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Do you think there's too much or there's not enough? Or I don't know, what are your thoughts on it? For, for me, it's always been like I, I go back to watching when I was like really when I was young. I used to I was a big Ray Harryhausen fan and with stop motion effects and stuff. And I loved like Jason and the Argonauts and, you know, Clash of the Titans and stuff like that. And that was all stop motion. But the thing with that, the thing with that is the, the stories were written well. I, for me, it's all about if it has a good story and you can, you know, you can combine having a good story with a good amount of C, with with the right amount of CGI. Like if you go to Avatar, I think Avatar kind of did it right because it had a really good story and the cgi was pretty good at the time it wasn't you know ground i mean for the time it probably was pretty groundbreaking technology too so when you combine you know a good good cgi good story i think you can come out with a good result now there's movies that maybe use too much cgi and they take away from the focus a little because you're always like you know it's a little weird and maybe too much it takes away the focus of it but i think honestly you always want to have a good story and um as long as you can have the good story and have that as the backbone um you know i think i think you should be successful and in terms of like overusing cgi uh i mean that becomes a thing it's like it's like anything um if you put too much into it um, you know, and it can definitely take focus away from what you're what you're really trying to do. But I think I think some movies, you know, um, if you go back, like the groundbreaking CGI is one thing. Like you know, Terminator Two and The Matrix, obviously, yeah. you know, those were amazing, and they had a good amount. You know, the CGI was there, but like I said, I think really the focus has to be on on the story for uh, number one. You know. Yeah, I mean, and I think you, you, you nailed it there, and I think that audiences are also getting smart smart about that. If we look at yeah. something like like Godzilla King of Monsters I mean mm. I think from a special effects point of view that was that was fantastic it was incredible I mean look mm-hmm. I enjoyed the movie I'm, I'm not going to be one of those people that you know trashes it but I enjoyed it I know a lot of people were kind of eh you know but in the past yeah. that would have been like you know a huge spectacle to see and I mean that movie I mean they lost a lot of money on that uh, Legendary lost like <laughs> a lot of money on there and yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking, you know, especially with streaming, the way that it's going, like, you know, a lot of stuff going direct to streaming. And naturally, this means they're going to start looking at cutting budgets because they, you know, I don't think cinemas are ever going to go truly away, but it's going to be a, a lot smaller. Like, you know, we, we're not going to see end game sort of money anymore. I, I don't think the, the days of $2 billion, I think yeah. we're pretty much done for. But yeah. I have a feeling that now with everything going to streaming, they obviously are going to be cutting budgets. They're not going to be able to say to directors, okay, here's $250 million, go make a movie. It's going to be a lot smaller. And they're going to have to get a lot more clever about what they do. And I think that might not be necessarily a bad thing. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you're talking about Godzilla King of the Monsters. I I was a huge Godzilla like a fan when I was a little boy growing up, I you know Godzilla, Mech- Mechagodzilla, all those movies, and and you know there was there were pretty much all practical effects besides you know maybe the beams and you know they were all miniatures and stuff, and like I said, um, as time goes on, you know they add, you know, these companies have more budget and then they add CGI comes out, you know people are using CGI and then they grow the budgets up and then they you know they want to put them in, but I think you know like I said, it, you don't necessarily need. Like, I need to spend all that money on CGI unless you really need to. Um, and I think you're right. I think that studios, well, you know, you're losing you're losing a lot of people going to the movies with people. Now, now you got to get HBO Max. And yeah. I mean, it's not not such a big deal because I, I know a lot of people are cutting their uh, their their uh, like their cable bills and getting they're all getting apps these days, you know, getting Netflix, yeah. HBO Max, Disney, you know, so um yeah, I mean, it's going to be a weird thing because I already miss going to the movies. You know, I've been, I was a big movie guy myself yeah, going to movies and, and, uh, it sucks. And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure things will kind of, um, change in a way. I'm not sure how it's going to, I think there's more, more people are streaming from, like, tons of more people are streaming from home and, um, maybe there'll be more TV series and stuff like that instead of big blockbusters. I think that's one way. Um, things can happen because you, you look at Marvel and Disney Plus and uh, Star Wars with all these new series coming out, you know, and th- that's another thing. The, the budgets are really going a lot more these days towards TV series. Look at look at the Mandalorian. It's like a movie, you know, yeah. um, 
I just watched a new WandaVision episode. I mean, it's a weird show, but it's different. And it's got me think like wondering what's going to happen next. And I think, you know, and the budgets are huge for these shows. At least they look like it, you know? So I think that, I think there's more focus on those uh, for the future. Maybe I actually had a good question to ask you now about WandaVision, mm-hmm. especially because you mentioned it. I read, yeah. okay, it was, it was a while back. I read that it, the show is costing about $150 million to make. There are rumors mm. now that it could be maybe $200 million or so. I mean, but that's a Reddit rumor, so I don't take it seriously. But right. like $150 million, that means it's more expensive than the final season of Game of Thrones. Explain to me, that's, please, where that is going, because I do not see that in any episode. Like, because of the, there, uh, yeah. the CG, I mean, I don't see it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's CG, yeah. Like there's there's little effects, you know. It's like you know, you know, you got Wanda doing little magic. Like it's it's kind of like it's like Bewitched with CGI or something. That's yeah. what makes me feel like, you know. And, and there's little there's CGI effects and stuff, but it's like there's not like you know armies like Endgame or you know there's nothing like crazy going on exactly. with that. But I don't, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. I mean, there's a lot. Maybe I, you got me, because <laughs> there's there's minimal CGI. I mean, I there's know. not too much. I mean, there's because it's, it's a good question the director said Matt, Matt Shankman he said that uh, mm-hmm. that basically that this has got more visual effects than Endgame but the reason for it is obviously because they shot six hours in total versus Endgame being three hours okay it makes total sense right. but right. looking at the series now, unless they've got like a massive finale planned for you know the remaining episodes because these first three episodes like I said I'm like is somebody doing like money laundering here or something because there's absolutely no way <laughs> this series costs $150 yeah. million I mean the first episode was shot in front of a live studio audience that yeah. I mean that's a built set okay that's you know but still mm-hmm. looking at that I'm thinking you know even the likes of Arrow and the Flash I mean they had more CG okay they, they'd blow the entire CG like if they had King Shark or something yeah. like that and like the rest of the, mm-hmm. the, rest of the season you see they were struggling but right you can kind of see this show I'm, not, I'm just thinking I don't know where the money's going I, I'm being honest here I really don't know what's going on there I mean, it, and it was in black and white for a while too, wasn't it? I mean, you, yeah. you get we went, we got color, and it's it. For, I mean, it's it's crazy to me. Um, I'm just trying to think. Like, I can't, you know. Like I said, there's there's some CGI in there, you know, little spells and things going on with Wanda and 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 you know stuff like that. But I don't know what what, what all that's going into. But I mean. I, I, I don't really know, to be honest with you. It's it's crazy to me. I mean, yeah, like you said, it's 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 there's more shot footage and there's more there's more stuff go, going on with that, like more episodes, you know, more just more footage in general. Yeah. So that can make sense. I mean, but still, like I, like you know, look at all the CG, like, you know, with Thanos and the ship and all the characters and the fight scenes and all yeah. that. It's it's crazy to me. But it's, even like Game of Thrones, I mean, you look at Game yeah, of Thrones, yeah, and I mean, mm-hmm. you can see, okay, right. I mean, the, the dragons. White walkers. Like, and, you know, mm-hmm, dragons. And, you know, yeah. even, the, even the scenery, the settings, I mean, obviously flying the people out. Right. One division, I mean, this could have been done at, you know, the back of a Disney uh, Disney lot. So it's like, yeah. that's it. I mean, literally they could have used any set from any sitcom of like the past 50 years and no one will notice any difference there. And this is what I'm trying to understand. Unless there's something bigger coming, yeah. which is possible. I mean, somebody, they joked with me on Twitter and they said, oh yeah, it's for the rest of the X-Men that are coming in the final episodes. I'm like, yeah, imagine. That would be really cool. I mean, yeah, the new Fantastic Four shows up, man, it's going to blow me away or something. <laughs> but, yeah. and, and it looks like a closed set. Like if you look, there's scenes where they're like looking like they're next store with the other characters and you can see like it's not real yeah like if you look at the you know it's all like a set it just looks like a closed set with the with the backgrounds and yeah i mean the, like i said they're, they're they're leading this to the you know the what is it the, the madness dr strange movie right they're, they're going kind of into that because i know scarlet witch is going to be one of the main characters in that yeah. so i don't know i mean it kind of if i see a lot of rumors online that she's going to be the villain or there's going to be an evil scarlet witch or she's going to turn evil i mean that would kind of make sense since, since she's one of the strongest people in the avengers you know what i mean yeah i don't i don't really know but it, it would make sense um but yeah i don't know and I, another thing is i don't know what villain they're gonna they're gonna have i mean i hear king the conqueror i hear you know obviously galactus and, and you know Mojo as i don't well. really know yeah so it's, it's just a whole lot of stuff right anyway. but but like i'm saying it's just for me it's just it's crazy to think of just this budget that's out there i mean i'm looking yeah. at like monster hunter that came out in december that was i think 60 right. million dollars and you look at those mm-hmm. monsters and you okay that's like you know you can see proper cgi there and i mean i'm 
know where they, yeah. I know where they shot it. I know where, like, I mean, they shot it actually in South Africa, so I know exactly where, mm -hmm. where they went oh, to get okay. stuff. So, but you look at, you can see where the CG budget went. There, you're like, okay, I understand. And yeah. you, know, you can even see at certain points where they're like, okay, no, we're just going to show half of a creature because they're probably like, ah, this is getting too, too much to render. <laughs> it's too expensive here. But yeah, you can see where that money went. And I'm just saying, like, Wonder Vision. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at the trailer for Falcon and Captain America. Uh, Falcon, sorry, and Winter mm -hmm. Soldier. And I'm like, looking at that, I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, I can understand that costing probably 150 million because they're obviously going to different yeah. different places yeah and locations and different yeah. locations they've got different characters they you know, a lot of action scenes you know a lot of um, yeah practical effects as well that sort of stuff stunts yeah mm -hmm. uh, but yeah it's like i mean this is a sitcom i mean this is like full house for yeah 150 million dollars <laughs> it's like how how right <laughs> So, but. I don't get it. I mean, it, I mean, there's the, the like. What are they going to the commercial? I mean, I don't know what it is. They got the little commercials in there with like I see little little Hydra references and like uh, you know, I don't get it. Like I don't. I mean, there's little effects and fil and, and a lot of color filtering and, and ch changes of colors and little effects. But that's about it. I don't. It's it's. I'm I'm really curious in the same way. Uh, I don't know. I don't know where that budget's going. But it's it's an interesting thing. I mean, maybe. Uh, like you know like you said it's it's really about all the shot footage but like it's just like a close set i don't i don't yeah. i don't i don't understand it yet i don't really don't i don't understand it either right now look i mean if it, so, if it is the evolution of sitcoms i mean obviously they're starting off smaller with all the stuff that happened you know like many years back in a dick van dyke show that right. sort of stuff in right. which, mm -hmm. and obviously they're building up i mean i know that mm -hmm. they said that they've got like modern family sort of influences moving forward mm -hmm. so we get this so maybe it could be like the future episodes like that's where everything starts happening because we start getting more into yeah. time versus back then where it's just like, you know, it's intentionally cheesy, I guess. You know, intentionally, like, you know, just a little bit of like, as you say, bewitched with like a little bit of a, of a sparkle here. Yeah. There, which might be the My intentional thing. But I mean, for me, like, uh, I mean, I had a whole big discussion about this. I just think that this should have been a series that was dropped all over all at once because it, I'm seeing a little bit of a drop off and I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of people like saying, I, I don't know what's going on. And you know, yeah. it, it just feels like nothing's go happening. And I think with something like this, binging it in one go will help you because the episodes are only like, you know, 30 minutes long. So, but right. yeah, and, and, we'll and, they all, and, and yeah, it's, it's building, it keeps building us up almost at the end of every episode. They're kind of building up to something and it's nothing. And then what's and then the next episode's like, I, I don't know if they're going to build like actually going to start, something totally different next episode where it becomes into something like a totally different type of show. I, I don't know yet. Cause you know how people do with the, with the trailers and when trailers come out and uh, you know, they show and shows change totally throughout and maybe it'll be like totally different. Yeah. I don't know, but, but they keep giving us all these clues and, you know, making us, and it, it's a weird thing. Cause I, like on the base of it, I like, I don't know what the heck's going on and I'm just like I'm watching the you know King of Queens or something it's like <laughs> like you know another show or something and and it's gonna totally I don't know if it's gonna totally change or and they're gonna keep us on the you know on the edge of our seats this whole time but all I know is I think we all know one thing is that it's definitely gonna something is gonna happen and we're gonna f find something out and it's just a matter of time yeah, exactly. and uh, it's gonna lead to some something and I mean yeah what I, what I see it as is I see this as the MCU's attempt at replicating what Legion was and I think, you know, wow. Legion was like super successful, like nobody expected, especially from Fox. And I think Fox has lost, um, like even the TV series, like The Gifted and all the stuff they were doing, it was mm -hmm. really, really good at the, uh, like when it, when it was coming out. I think it was better than a lot of the other, like, you know, properties that were out at that stage. And I think Legion especially was something that's like surprised and shocked people because it was just, it was something like deep and dark and, you know, it was all inside of obviously David's head, but it's also mm -hmm. like you know it kind of showed that and I think probably you know MC looked at it and like Kevin Feige he's like wow that's like really cool what they did there we should do something similar but obviously we have to do it you know different so let's you know explore like something right. through sitcoms or, or do something like that and obviously they were inspired by you know Tom King's vision series maybe but yeah I, like I'm saying I'm just yeah special effects wise I, I don't know where that budget's going man like somebody's been like overcharging yeah. or they're inflating that invoice or something's <laughs> going on there but anyways man <laughs> let's moving on like let's discuss yeah. you Strider what is going on what is some of the cool stuff that you're putting out there what is the stuff you're working on you know like let the people know out there man 
Well, uh, definitely I've been getting a lot of a lot of interesting feedback lately. Uh, the, the Star Wars stuff that I've been doing has really been getting a lot of attention, and I really appreciate that. And um, uh, currently I'm working on uh, I'm doing Han Solo. People want to see the Han Solo character since he's so uh, he's kind of a big big deal, obviously, yeah. in the Star Wars universe. And um, I'm going to – people wanted to see this one, this actor, Anthony uh, and Gruber, who – was in a movie called The Age of Adeline a little bit um, with Harrison Ford and they people started drawing comparisons to a I young Harrison this. Ford and him yeah. you know um, so and then uh, he he also I think he did the voice in the Telltale series the Joker in that um, yes, so he yes. people somewhat somewhat know who he is and um, you know I've been I've been doing some research on him and seeing there's definitely a comparison as like a, with a young Harrison Ford and I was like you know what let's see what I could do because he hasn't he's been in a couple things but he's not like I can't like actually go through an entire movie and because it's it's a process the defect stuff you need to go in and find clips clips beyond clips of of people so it's 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 kind of time consuming uh with i mean covid actually helps me with that a little bit because i have a little bit more time so in a way it's in a weird kind of way um it gives me a little bit of time for that but yeah i'm working on uh some star wars stuff i'll be doing uh a big video where I kind of put all the characters together and do a cool little thing with Sebastian Stan as Luke and uh, Millie Bobby Brown from Stranger Things as Leia. And then I'm going to put them together in a video. And then after that, I'm going to do some other side Star Wars characters. And then I'm going to continuously uh, do new polls on my YouTube channel and see what uh, you know people want to see and see if I can you know make them come to life, basically. Oh, that's really cool. And I mean, obviously, from, from your side, in terms of any original sort of stuff, is there anything that you, you, you've got in mind, any plans that you have or... Or, or you just purely stick into you know your deep fake and your concept sort of stuff. Well, uh, for a long time, I've been I've been doing uh, concept videos and trailers and stuff. Uh, but I've kind of gotten away from doing the trailers thing because um, it, it's there's been a lot of uh, issues with copyright with that stuff. And with these type of videos, I can kind of you know get my own music. And I actually use a really I'm going to give a shout out to a channel which I get the music from now. They're called La Orchestra Cinematique oh. on YouTube. They do some amazing. Uh, recreations of music from many different things across movies and TV. So I'll give, give them a shout out. They do great, great stuff. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, basically doing, uh, you know, some of the videos I've been doing have been trailer esque. They've been kind of like trailers or like like teasers and stuff like that. But um, I think I'm going to kind of do it the way I've been doing uh, these videos lately, which is literally I have to go through and find good shots and stuff that would work the best for deep faking because some, some shots I, I scrap a lot yeah. to be honest. Like I, I go through and I, and I find some good stuff and then I'm like, well, this isn't going to work. This doesn't come out right. Cause a lot of it depends on good lighting and good quality. So yeah, like uh, I, I have a list right now. I call it the list where people give me ideas and I write them down and then I kind of, uh, Get feedback from people on uh, on Facebook and Twitter and uh, the you know the community uh, uh, YouTube page and see what people want to see and you know I, I'm kind of really digging the, doing this stuff too because it's it's um it's a technology that I've kind of always wanted to use in a way for concepts because it kind of just goes right into what I used to do um, and kind of make them into a new type of video which is uh, you know more YouTube friendly and you know uh, it just works for me. Cool. So I'm having having fun with it. <clears throat> That's awesome, man. Now, obviously, just before we wrap up here, I want to say thanks a lot mm -hmm. for you know joining us on the podcast. It's been really great. And now's the opportunity just to let people know where they can follow you. You know, punch your YouTube channel. Make sure that you get all those links in there. <laughs> sure. Well, uh, once again, uh, thanks so much for having me today. And um, you can follow me uh, on Twitter at Strider HD. It's S T R Y D E R H D. I actually have a Facebook artist page, which is uh, actually I'm growing it like crazy lately. It's almost a seventy thousand. Uh, followers it's uh, strider hd productions on on facebook uh i have a instagram page i don't really use that often but sometimes i put stories on there and that's called the real strider hd because apparently there is other ones or there's like a there's a music artist named strider or tinchy strider or something so i i just did that um so i'm at the real strider hd on instagram as well so thanks uh, again for having me today um and uh i appreciate it Thanks a lot. And to everyone listening, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us know what other topics you'd like us to chat. Until next time.